You know, when I was much younger, I used to always think if I was doing the thing I wanted to be doing when I was at a certain age, like maybe in my mind, I thought when I'm 30, I want to be doing this. Or when I'm 40, I want to be doing that. As long as I was doing the thing I wanted to be doing when I got to that age, then age was just a number and I wasn't going to get depressed over the fact that I have that number. my friend welcome back if you are new here i'm joan chan your host of the podcast by joy with joyan thank you for joining us every week for the most authentic courageous and powerful connections with a lot of fun thank you for showing up for yourself today to continue to learn and grow to live a life with joy passion purpose and success in your own style on your own terms Joining us today is a certified master integrative life coach with a myriad of coaching certifications. She's certified as a breakthrough shadow coach, empowered parent coach, courage coach, healing your heart coach, leadership coach, holistic lifestyle coach, and bigger, better brain work coaching. She's also the author of the international best-selling book, Bigger, Better, and Braver, Conquer Your Fears, Embrace Your Change, Embrace Your Courage, Transform Your Life. Prior to her work as a coach, she owned and operated a personal training gym and she knows what it takes to help people achieve big goals. So today, her passion is coaching others to step out of their fear and into bigger versions of themselves. So she's here today to empower you to get out of autopilot and live your best life. So guys, help me in welcoming the confident, courageous and empowered woman, Nancy Picard. This episode is sponsored by Get the Law of Attraction. If you have been listening to this podcast, then you will know I am a big believer of the universe and the law of attraction. Get the Law of Attraction is a spiritual and inspirational company that gives you something really good like chocolate chip cookies to feed your soul and your mind every single day. They provide daily Instagram posts and reels on the universe, gratitude, spirituality for your hectic life. They also have an educational course on the Law of Attraction and Gratitude Journal and their links are in the show notes below. Go to their website and use promo code JOYAN, J-O-Y-A-N when you sign up and you will get $25 off. Hi Nancy, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you for having me. I am so happy to have you here today. And uh, so I want to start off with a quote of yours, actually, um, that I saw on your Instagram, which reads, I think it's the most recent one, the last one that you posted. Um, it says, fear is more than about keeping you small, than it's about keeping you safe. And I really like that. And I chose that it's because it's, it's a very different perspective. It's not what I hear often, because the, the version that I hear often is like, fear is keeping you safe right? But why did you say it's keeping you small? Like, how do you see fear? Well, I mean, it's not about the definition of fear. I see fear as the thing that you're afraid to do. And that's what we're afraid to do. But, yeah. but those fears are keeping you stuck. They're keeping you plain small. So it's not like I'm saying, gee, I'm going to go walk down that dark alley in a really bad neighborhood, even though I'm afraid. That's not the kind of fear I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about, I'm afraid to take that job. I'm afraid to move across the country. I'm afraid to get into a relationship. I'm afraid to get out of a relationship. It's, it's the things that you're afraid to do, but it's just your own disempowering beliefs that are keeping you being afraid. And so what you need to do is you need to use your fear as a driving force for change. So anything that I'm afraid to do, I know I have to do it because I know that my growth is on the other side. Yes. So how do we then push through fear? Because we all know that we have our, what we want is on the other side of our fear. So how do we really like, what is the very first step that we could take to really move beyond the fear that is holding us back? Well, you know, you have to like look at your fears and see what it, what is it? 
Is it fear of success? Is it fear of failure? Is it fear of looking stupid? I mean, those are basically what people will tell me. Oh, I don't want to look stupid or I don't want to fail. It will hurt too much. But doesn't not doing anything, isn't that more embarrassing? Isn't there more shame? Isn't that worse than even trying and failing? Because when you try and fail, it's a stepping stone to success. So, okay, that one didn't work. What did I like about it? What didn't I like about it? What can I change? What can I do better? Stop like only looking at the end game. The juice is in the journey. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy trying new things. Have a growth mindset. All of those things are more and more important than anything else. Yeah. Okay. And now the now I want to um talk about your story. Like why why did you become a life coach? And uh, what led you down the path of coaching? What was your story? Well, I had been married for 26 years and in those 26 years I raised two kids and I owned a personal training gym. So I was already comfortable and passionate about working with people. Fast forward, we get, I get divorced and I'm the victim in my story. I'm broken, you know, took me many years to recover. And I was once again engaged. And when that relationship broke up, I got myself a healing your heart coach, which is one of the many certifications that I have. And in the moment I got the coach, I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through the coaching and then I'm going to get certified. And this is the work I want to do. And so mm. that was 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And um, do you think everyone needs a life coach or needs a coach? I do. I absolutely okay. do. You know, I there's yeah. that saying that nobody gets to the Olympics without a coach. But it's the same thing. Like coaching is for psychologically healthy human beings that are stuck that need assistance, that need an accountability coach, that need, in my case, somebody that will help them uncover their shadow beliefs, their disempowering, limiting beliefs from their childhood that they don't even know they have. But those are the very beliefs that are keeping them playing small, keeping them living in fear and keeping them stuck. And that's not something you're gonna do on your own. So if there's something you want and you just can't get it, Get yourself a coach. It's very different than a yeah. therapist. It's a it's a support system. Why do you think so many people? They are so I don't know about um, um in your country per se, you know, or in your um like the people around you. But here, I would say a lot of people they are still very skeptical when it comes to coaching or getting coach. Um, they think, oh, I don't need a coach. Like, why do I need a coach, right? But why is it said I, I'm a coach as well, but I totally understand that. I totally get that. But what do you think is the number one reason that is stopping people from getting a coach, although they really need, they really need one? I think a lot of people don't know what coaches do. Okay. And then other people might think that we're just like therapists and they feel like I don't need a therapist. Yeah, I see. And then other people are just not oriented towards getting service. So I'm somebody that if I start a new sport, I get myself a teacher. If I take a new course, I get myself a teacher. I like the shortest way to the end. And that comes yeah. with getting an expert who's going to help me get there quicker. So mm. that's my orientation. I always will hire somebody to help me move it along. Yeah. If that's not your orientation, then you'll be more hesitant to get a coach. Right. Okay. And because you, you have so many different types of certifications, how do you determine that, okay, this client this is what you need. I'm going to use this coaching. Like, how do you, how do you do that? Well, no matter what somebody comes to me for, I'm still going to do the shadow work. I'm still going to help them uncover the disempowering beliefs that are keeping them stuck. It doesn't matter. But like, let's say somebody comes to me because they just got divorced or their partner just died or they're estranged from one of their children or they're not speaking to a sibling and that's, and that's something they want to change. I use healing your heart with them. 
that's a whole different series. Okay. If somebody comes to me and they are, um, they don't know how to say no and they're overwhelmed and they're angry and they're guilty and they're, I do boundary coaching because they obviously have leaky boundaries and they need boundary help. So then I do boundary coaching. If somebody comes to me and they're having money issues, I do worthy. I have a whole series on net worth versus self-worth and I'll take them through worthy. And then sometimes I mix them all up and I do all my different things week by week with whatever the client comes to me with. I'll say to myself, oh, I'm going to go do this today or I'm going to do this today. So it's very organic and I just, it's like a la carte. Mm, yeah. So some people, I go straight through one of those modalities and other people I pick and choose. Okay. So it's very personalized, right? You really have to vary. Yeah. Okay, great. And what, okay, this is something that I find very interesting because when you mention about money, you mention about self-worth and then you say about money. Why, why do we attach our own self-worth to the money that we earned or, you know, how much we charge? Like, why, why is it uh, correlated? Well, it's correlated in different ways because if you don't feel worthy, then you don't ask for enough money. You don't ask for a raise. You don't charge enough. You give away your services. So it goes both ways. It doesn't just mean that you feel worthy when you have money. It means that if you don't feel worthy, you don't do the things that you could do to make more money. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now for other people, their self-worth is around how much money they have. Yeah. And so if they have a lot of money, they feel worthy. If they don't have a lot of money, they don't feel worthy. So it's, it goes either way. If you don't feel worthy, then you don't check in. You don't pay attention. You've got blinders on. You don't pay attention to where your money's going, how much you're spending, how much you're making. You just like, you put your head in the sand and you don't look at it. You're not worthy. You're not worthy of money. That's a shadow belief. I'm not good with money or spiritual people don't care about money. There's all kinds of things around that, that go with it. And it's a really a matter of figuring it out and getting to the unworthiness so that you are willing to ask for what you need and what you deserve and go after the better job and feel secure in getting a better job. It's all involved. Mm. Yeah. Okay. What is one thing that people can do or one tip, I would say, or I don't think there's any tip, but one thing that you would tell people, like how, what, what can we do to start increasing our own self-worth? Like, do you have a, a technique for that? I do. Yeah. I do. <laughs> I think that you can't feel worthy until you can trust your word. So to me, self-worth and self comes from self-trust and staying in alignment with the things you say you're going to do. Another reason to get a coach. A coach helps you stay in alignment. They're your alignment partner. Yeah. And they will help you be accountable. They're, they're your accountability partner. Until you like get the wings and learn how to stay accountable for yourself, now you're staying accountable because you don't want to show up each week and tell your coach that you didn't do what you said you were going to do. Yeah, yeah. So learning to trust your word, learning that your word is golden, that's how you start to build your own self-worth. I love that. Yes, totally. Yeah. And okay, now you talk about shadow belief and, you know, you talk about shadow belief uh, a couple of times now. And so, and I know a big part of your work is to help people uncover their shadow belief and unconscious commitment. And can you talk to us about what are they really, especially unconscious commitment, that is really interesting to me. Yeah, so your shadow beliefs are beliefs that happened in the first 10 years of your life. Something happens and you're not emotionally mature enough to understand. And so in an instant, you make a meaning about it. And the meaning is disempowering. I'm stupid. I need to stay quiet so no one will know. 
My voice doesn't matter. My needs don't matter. I need to be perfect to be loved. I need to control everything to be safe. Um, I'll never be chosen. I'm unlovable. All of these things happen because something happens and you're really not old enough to understand it. And so you make this belief. It gets buried in your subconscious. You're not aware of it, but it actually controls and rules your operating system. Right. And then you have an unconscious commitment, a promise, a strategy that you make also in your subconscious to keep that belief alive. So, for example, when I was five years old, I was playing with the lighter. I put myself on fire. My shadow belief that I didn't know for another 45 years was that I'm not safe alone. Now, for a five year old who put herself on fire, that's a brilliant belief. It's true. Yeah. My strategy was to never be alone. So to never be alone, I had to always make myself digestible to other people. I was everybody's best friend. I was every, I was the best girlfriend. I was the best wife because that was my strategy. That was my unconscious commitment to myself to never be alone. Wow. Well. That is so powerful. Yeah, that is so powerful. So the first, the first question, uh, how do we first uncover our um, unconscious belief? What is the question that you ask? Or we need to ask ourselves or for people who are listening right now, in order for them to really uncover what is holding them back or what is their you know, unconscious belief, what is the question they have to ask themselves? Well, honestly, it's not an easy thing to do on your own. Okay. That's why you get a shadow coach. So that's number one. Or in my book, I have exercises and internal processes. Yeah. So it's sequential questions that will help you get to them. But if you're not doing any of that and you just want to see if you can uncover something, yeah. think about a time in your childhood that you were ashamed or when something big happened. And then ask yourself, what did you make it mean about you? Ah, uh, right. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, that's the beginning, but it's really not a one man job. Yeah. It's really made for a professional to help people to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And especially some people, they had a hard time going back to their childhood or they totally like can't remember any single, like they can't remember anything from their childhood it's because unconsciously they, they didn't want to go there. Right. They don't want they block out that memory because it's so painful. So how, how as a coach, like you help them to uncover, like go back safely you know in a safe space because if without that they are not going to uncover or heal themselves right how do you take them back to their childhood i'm using an internal process i'm asking them a lot of questions so like um where in your life do you feel stuck right now okay and then they tell me that and then i'll say what's the negative self-talk that you are hearing about that situation then i'll say how does that negative talk make you feel? Well, it makes me feel anxious. It makes me feel depressed. It makes me feel disappointed. It makes me feel angry. Okay, let's go back in time. When else in your life have you had those same feelings? Hmm, well, you know, I felt like that in college when X happened. Okay, great. Go back even further now. What's the earliest time you can remember having those kinds of feelings? And all of a sudden they'll be like, oh God, I forgot this even happened, but when they'll say something. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay. Now you mentioned about boundaries and uh, one thing that you um, coach as well. How do we set healthy boundaries? Oh yeah. Before that, before that, right. And our question is like, because you talk about reclaiming your power, the reclaiming the power that you give to others. And I, I'm sure that it's about, you know, boundaries as well. So how do we, how do we take back the power that we have given to others? You have to get quiet enough to even see what your needs are. Okay. Because many of us have grown up thinking our needs don't matter. Love and life means taking care of everyone else. To be loved, you put other people first, right? So then you grow up and you actually don't know what your own needs are and you never state your needs and so your needs never get met. And then you get frustrated and you get disappointed and you get angry and you eventually like shoot up 
and yell at somebody totally inappropriately because you kind of just were pushing it down and pushing it down and you imploded or you exploded. Yeah. So to set healthy boundaries, you have to figure out what they are. What are your needs? What will you no longer tolerate? You know, what do you want? What don't you want? What's unacceptable to you? Starting with yourself. What's your self-care routines? How many times do you let yourself go? How many times do you say you're going to do X, Y, or Z and you don't do it? Yeah. So you start by setting healthy boundaries with yourself. Mm. I say, I'm going to exercise five times a week. Exercise five times a week. I say, I'm going to meditate every morning. Meditate every morning. Like start some self-care. Ask yourself every morning when you get out of bed, what's the most self-honoring thing I can do today? And then do it. Yeah. That's setting a healthy boundary with yourself. That is a question that I don't think everyone is asking themselves right now, right? The first question. Right. Yeah. It's all about, okay, what am I going to do today? Like, what is my to-do list today, right? So, right. and how many times our to-do list is like nothing to do with us? It's all about others, right? Yes. Yeah. That. And um, how do we say no? Because I think that is really a hard thing for a lot of people, including me myself, to realize say no to someone else. Because you feel that saying no is, you're not saying no to that person. You're saying no to the thing they're asking you. Right. So you basically can say, I'm saying yes to you, but I'm saying no to going out Thursday night. And even if I was okay doing that last week, I'm not okay doing it this week. And no is a complete sentence. You don't need to go further than that. It's, it's, it's all the story with the buildup of the no. Just say, no, I'm sorry, I'm not available. Mm. Done. You know, I no longer enjoy doing that or it's just not for me. Right. And this is often like we are trying to, you know, it's like um, the symptoms when people are just like trying to please others, right? They are people pleasers so they're having a hard time saying no. They just want to say yes to everyone else but not themselves. You've got to make yourself a priority. You have to be your number one priority. And therefore, you learn to say yes only when it's a hell yes. Okay. Otherwise, it's a no. And it's not supporting you. Mm. The no's are actually supporting you. The yeses are, are, may not be. So make sure that you're only saying yes when it's really a supportive yes to you. You really want to do it for you. Not to please another, you know, not so somebody doesn't get mad at you. Okay. And somebody else's reaction to your truth is not your problem. It's their problem. So you could say when they get mad or they say something, you could say, I'm really sorry you feel that way. You need to do some work around it because your reaction is your responsibility, not mine. Yes. Yeah, but my response, how I react, my my is my responsibility, right? Because we can never control other people. You can never control their word, their action. So, I'm sure people are listening to this because some of them they are not. Um, most of my audience they are entrepreneurs and business owner or coaches, right? But some of them are also like having a full time job. So they might be like, well, they are listening to this part of us uh, having this conversation. With this, but Nancy, how can I say no to my boss? How can I say no to my coworkers, for example, like in a work environment? How can I say no to my boss? Like, I can't be saying no. I don't like this is the thing that I don't want to do. Or it doesn't support me. How, how can I say no to my boss? Is it, can I do that still? It depends on what the no is for. Okay. Like if somebody's bringing you work at the end of the day and you have a family that you need to get home to dinner, you need to say to your coworker, I need to be home with my kids for dinner. Would you be willing to not give me new work after four o'clock so that I can be home? Because if you do, I'm going to have to do it the next day because it's important for me to be home. Yeah. That's setting a boundary. You can set a boundary on a Zoom call by saying, would you be willing to not talk over me and wait till I'm done talking? Because otherwise I'm going to have to call you out in a Zoom meeting and say, I'm sorry, I wasn't done talking. <laughs> So there are ways to do it and you have to make yourself a priority. And sometimes it's difficult and sometimes you can't say no, 
But if it's not working for you, it's not working for you. So get brave enough to state your needs and state it in a way that you're making it about you. I feel really disrespected when you do X. Would you be willing to do Y? Okay. The other question that I often hear is that when people say, okay, but you talk about self-love, you talk about making yourself a priority. I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. Isn't it selfish, right? When I put myself first before everyone else, when I say no to everyone, when I just say yes to myself, isn't it selfish? I'm not advocating people to be selfish people, but being selfless means there's no you. There's less of you. Mm. You need to balance selfish and selfless. So I'm not saying go out and be the most selfish human being in the world, but making yourself a priority is not selfish. It's self-care. Yeah. And you will have nothing left to give if you stay selfless. You'll be exhausted. You'll be overwhelmed. You'll be angry. You'll have nothing left to give at work or at home. Mm. When you make yourself a priority and you're that kind of selfish, you will have more to give and you'll give willingly. Exactly. It's like, as the saying goes, if we can't take care of ourselves, how can we take care of someone else? Like, right, when emergency happens, put on your oxygen mask first, right? That's what we hear all the time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. If you can't love yourself, how can you expect someone else to love you or love even you loving someone else? So yeah, it all starts with ourselves first. And um, now the other question I have is, how do we get out of um, autopilot? Because a lot of people, they are living their life the same thing. Like they're just living the same life over and over again, right? 365 days a year. How do we get out of autopilot? Because we are just doing the same thing over and over again. We just want to get the same results over and over again. But this is what I see a lot of people today. They are just like, not really like, you know, not really living their life, not living their life to the fullest. How do we get unstuck? How do we get out of autopilot? Well, it's really emotional autopilot that you want to get out of. And you've got to start asking yourself the right questions. You know, is this, am I doing this for me or am I doing this to please another? Is this making me happy? You know, what am I being triggered about? What do I really want? What do I need? How can I see this differently? Is this supporting my future? Is this supporting my vision and goals? Or is this keeping me in the past? You ask yourself the right questions. Okay. And that's how you get out of autopilot. Yeah. Or if you know where you're in autopilot, you are you binge watch TV or you binge social media yeah. or you eat absentmindedly. Well, catch yourself, figure out the, the places where you are and set a timer. So you're only going to be able to watch two shows or you're only going to s- scroll through social media for 20 minutes. You're going to eat with your left hand instead of your right hand. You're going to not have the TV on when you eat. You're going to do things that are that are going to take you out of autopilot. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. But how do we stay consistent? Because it's easier to do it just one time, right? But how do we stay consistent? Let's say you used the example earlier. Like, you know, just use the, where the most common example is like New Year's resolution, right? We all set goals, right? I'm going to go to gym, like starting this year, right? First of January. How do we stay consistent on our goals? It's about accountability. And that's why people get a coach. True. Yeah. If you can't be accountable on your own, get somebody that will help you. And if you don't want to hire a coach, get a friend. Get a partner. Tell somebody what you're planning. Let them check in with you. Ask them, would it be okay if, you know, I have to report to you every day that I did it? You know, if you don't have the tools yet to be accountable to yourself, Mm. hire somebody or enlist somebody to help you be accountable. Okay. Yes. Totally. Love that. Get someone to sign out the gym with you, right? And yeah, so much easier to work out with a friend. Yeah, exactly. Because... Someone is waiting for you, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And now you don't want to disappoint them. Exactly. Yeah. That's the whole point of um, getting a coach because I also had a coach before and I, I meet her every week. I'm sorry, every day. And um, I had to like show up and tell her, okay, this is what I have done. Or I like feel guilty when I say I didn't do it. Right. Because I promised her that I'm going to do it. But I feel like, okay, I can right. do it. And why? Right. Why I didn't do it. So that is um, very powerful. 
Um, and I read in your bio that says, in 2017, you traveled alone in Thailand and Vietnam. And that is very close to me, by the way. And undertook your biggest challenge, which, which is, uh, you know, climbing Kilimanjaro at age of 61. So tell me about that, the experience. Well, I was turning 60 and I wanted to do something major to mark that I still could do big things. Yeah. And so I trained for six months and I joined a group and I went and climbed Mount Kilimanjaro and I loved it. It was a very spiritual awakening. It proved to me I could do hard things. The premise of my book is what's your Kilimanjaro? Okay. Like, what do you want to do? You don't have to climb 19,341 feet, but what do you want to do? What's that thing out there that you always wanted to do and it's not your time. You're not smart enough. You don't have enough money. You've got too many other responsibilities. What's that thing? Because you need to get out there and do that thing. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm getting like ghost bump right now. I don't know why. <laughs> because huh. it could be very inspiring, Um, your, your story. Like really, like what is that thing that you have, you really want to do, but you have been pushing it, right? You have been procrastinating. Then you have been saying no to yourself. What is that thing? Mm-hmm. And I think that's really inspiring because if you can do it, right, at 60, right, I'm, or 61, I'm sure people who are listening, maybe they are like, their excuse is like, I'm too old, right? I'm, I'm Or I'm too young, right? I can't do that. I'm too young. How, who am I to start a business? I'm too old. Who am I to climb a mountain? So mm-hmm. how would you say to people like when they have all these like excuses? That's what they are. They're living in their excuses. They need to get themselves to an excuse-free zone. And that's where they need to go from. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And what do people say? But, you know, I really want to do this thing for myself. I really want to take a trip alone. I have a family. I have kids. Or I have a job. Or I have a business. I don't have money. How do they get rid of that and really, like, go for it? Everybody has a choice. You can live in your excuses because there's always some truth in them. Let's say you say you don't have enough money to take a trip. Yeah. Well, if you take $25 out of every paycheck and you put it in an envelope, eventually you're going to have money to take a trip. True. And so therefore it's just an excuse. You all have money. It's how you're spending it and what you're doing and how expensive a trip you might just want to, you know, Go camping for three days just to get away from your family and your children. And that won't cost a lot of money. So there's always a way to do the thing you want to do if you get out of your excuses. And your excuses are part of your disempowering beliefs that are meant to keep you small. Mm. So you've got to uncover them so you can move on. Yeah, I love that. And it ties back to the money topic that we just talked about earlier, right? If you're not willing to spend money on you, right? Then it means that you are not you're not worthy of receiving it or you're not worthy, right? That's again your self love. Right. right? Are you worthy of, you know, spending money on yourself or like buying things for yourself? What do you say about that? Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. Yeah. You have to make yourself a priority. Yeah. And the way you'll feel about yourself for actually doing something for yourself will make you so much happier in the long run that it's worth whatever sacrifice you had to make to get it done. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I love that. And uh, I think the last question that I have for you is um, about, because you are so, you, you know, you're climbing mountains, right? And um, the question is, how do we make peace, especially a woman, with their ticking biological clock? How do we make peace with that? You know, when I was much younger, I used to always think, If I was doing the thing I wanted to be doing when I was at a certain age, like maybe in my mind, I thought when I'm 30, I want to be doing this. Or when I'm 40, I want to be doing that. As long as I was doing the thing I wanted to be doing when I got to that age, then age was just a number and I wasn't going to get depressed over the fact that I have that number. The biological clock for women is a real thing. And so I have a lot of clients that come to me because they want to have a baby and they're not in a relationship. I I just spent the last hour with a client who is financially secure and 40 years old. And I'm like, go have the baby. 
Like, don't wait for the man. You have the choice of having the baby. Have a baby. Let the man come if the man comes, but you're 40 years old. He hasn't come yet. So stop waiting for him. If you really want to have a baby, have the baby. You'll figure it out. Yes. Yeah. There are so many ways you can have a baby without a man today. Right. right? And so, you know, I think I say to, I said to my client, listen, you're asking the wrong person because I love my kids and I love my grandkids and I would not feel good had I not had children. Other, co- other coaches may not have children. And so you might get a different answer from them. But what yeah. I'm saying is that if your heart is really crying out that you want to have a child have the, and you can financially afford to do it, have the child. You won't regret it. But when you're 50 and you never had kids, you're going to regret it if that's something you wanted. If it's not something you wanted, then no problem. Yeah. It's like getting yeah. a puppy. Don't ever get a dog if it's if you can't give it your all because there are a lot of work, right? Yes. So don't don't go into anything unless it's something you really, really want and you're gonna give it the time and the love and attention that it deserves. Yeah. And it's all about commitment, right? If you're committed to doing something, you gotta do it, right? Give it your hundred percent play yeah. out. Yeah. But if it's something that you are not willing to commit, that you are like hesitating, there's that there's not a thing for you, right? There's not real. Right. You're if you're yeah. not a hundred, if it's not a hundred percent yes, yes, don't do it. Yeah. But if it is a hundred percent yes, go do it. Yeah. Okay. Love that. But sometimes, you know, this is another thing that comes to mind. Like sometimes we are in the middle. Like yeah, this is a hell yes, but at the same time, also a uh, no. Like how do we? choose that's personal okay that's really that's really up to the person i think most of the time it's fear right our fear that is holding us back oh oh yes totally so get underneath the fear and then see if it's something you really really want and if it is then it becomes a hell yes picture your life 10 years from now if you didn't do it how are you going to feel exactly yeah right Love that powerful uh, exercise, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Love that. And um, before we move on to the final part of this uh, episode, do you have anything that you really want to talk about, really want to share? Perhaps I didn't let you or didn't ask you. No, I just feel that people really need to use fear as a driving force for change. They need to uncover what's keeping them stuck. They need to live in an excuse-free zone and... That's that's about it. Yeah, and that's about. I think that's the book, right? Your your book that the book that you have written. If people want to learn more about you, they're just gonna you know they really want to learn how to live a bigger, better, and braver life. Just go get a book, right? Go get a book. That's right. And uh, thank you. You have been very generous and kind with your time today. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we're gonna end with our final five rapid fire questions. So these are the five questions that I always ask my guests at the end of the show. And every question has to be answered in one word or one sentence. Is it okay? Okay. Yeah. Great. Go for it. Yes. Okay. The first question is, what is one thing you wish you knew earlier? That I was whole all by myself. I didn't need a partner to be whole. Exactly. That's what a lot of female, a lot of women needs to hear today. Yeah. If you could live your life all over again, what would you do differently? Well, I would have done some things differently with my ex-husband as we were getting a divorce. I would have, I would have handled it differently. Third question, what is something you're trying to learn or curious about right now? I'm actually getting two new certifications that I'm really excited about. Wow. What are the two new certifications? Mm-hmm. One is um, with David Kessler on being a grief facilitator and, um, and the other one is with Terry Real on being a relationship coach. Oh, okay. Love that. I think people will be like wondering, like, how can you be a relationship coach when you are not in a relationship? Or maybe you are, right? I don't know. I am in one. Okay, great. So yeah. I've been in one for the last five years and I've probably been in more relationships than most, you know, long term relationships than than probably most of your listeners. So I'd say I'm a, I'm a good expert on that. Yes. 
<laughs> the next question is, if you have five minutes and the whole world was listening to you, what would you say? If I had five minutes? Yes. I would say everything I've said tonight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uncover your disempowering beliefs and your unconscious beliefs. Live in an excuse-free zone. Get out of your comfort zone and use fear as a driving force for change. Okay, great. I love that. The last question is, what brings you joy? Mm, my grandchildren. Wow. Love that. Okay. And thank you so much again for taking your time out in your evening and sharing with us so joyfully today. I'm sure a lot of people want to get to know you or work with you or get to know your book. Like, where can I send people to you? Where can people find you? Uh, my website, Nancy Picard, P I C K A R D, lifecoach.com. It has all my different coaching modalities. It has a free chapter of my book. It has a, a link for a free discovery call to see if coaching with me is something they'd want to do. And all my podcasts, including yours, will eventually be on there. Thank you. So, yeah. And there's a bunch of webinars. Everything's on my, my podcast. They can also follow me. Nancy Picard, Life Coach on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, cool. Clubhouse, everything. Sure. Okay, great. And do you offer like one-off session or is like um, a package? I work in packages of 10. Okay. So 10 is the minimum that people have to commit. Uh, yeah, sometimes I will do five, but it costs more money to do five than it does to do. Each session is more than yeah. the, pa you know, it goes it's more expensive than the 10. So if you've got something you want to work on, I'd say 99% of my clients take the 10. Every once in a while, I get people that do the five and then another five. Right. All right, guys, I hope you love this episode. I hope you're learning a lot and writing down, you know, taking notes and answering questions. Go follow Nancy, go to her website, get her book and connect with her and book a discovery call with her and check out all the amazing things that she's doing. And also follow me on Instagram at joanne.chan if you're not following me and take take a screenshot of this episode while you're listening and tell me and Nancy, right? Share your IG story. Like, what is your biggest takeaway? What did you learn today from this episode? If you haven't subscribed yet, also hit the subscribe button so you never miss another episode and i will always leave you the same way as i leave you with every other episode show up the world needs you and you need you thanks for listening and i wish you all a joyful and amazing day ahead thanks again to our sponsor get the law of attraction follow them on instagram for daily spiritual enrichment and encouragement especially if your spiritual ice cream cone is melting a bit you will get a fresh scoop of your favorite flavor of spiritual encouragement and insights. Find Joy with Joy and listeners will also get $25 off when you go to their website and use promo code JOYAN, J-O-Y-A-N when you sign up for their Law Attraction course and Gratitude Journal. Once again, that is JOYAN, J-O-Y-A-N for $25 off and their links are in the show note below. Hey guys i hope you love this episode if you love this episode take a screenshot of this and share it on your ig stories and tell me what is your biggest takeaway remember to tag me at find joy with joy and underscore podcast so that we can connect with you and if you would like to support me personally and support my mission then please help us rate and review the podcast at apple podcast i read all of them and until next time, my friend, show up. The world needs you and you need you. You need the best version of yourself every single day. So always strive to be the best you can be in this present moment. Again, thanks for listening. And I will soon be back with another guest in the next episode.